went to Carlsbad Caverns this weekend. And uh, man, at first, the drive was looking real promising. You get past May Hill and it still looks pretty good, but then you get close to Artesian and you're like, oh man, <laughs> my steps, I, I went somewhere bad. And then you go down to Carlsbad and you're like, oh, I got worse. And then you get to the caverns out of nowhere and it's like, hey, this is all right. Oh, whatever. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. There is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. And in verse 23, just a few verses down. Um, a prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims folly. So uh, you, might have, you might have guessed we're going to be talking about our mouths and the things that we say. I hope that wasn't too obvious. Uh, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. Let's look at this verse first. Uses a, uses a few words here that I really want to focus in on. Uh, it says, There is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. So the first thing that I want to focus in on uh, in this passage, are you trying to give me a signal? Oh, I never know when Ben's trying to signal me. Uh, it says there in, in, in the beginning of verse 18, there is one whose rash words. Rash means basically spoken in the heat of the moment. When you're angry, for instance, and you say something real fast, or you say something to jab back at them, or you've been stewing about how this person wronged you for so long, and uh, so then when you finally see them in person, as soon as you have that opportunity to throw something out at them, you know, that would be a rash word. Um, something spoken in anger or something not well thought out. You didn't, maybe you thought it out well in the sense of, I wonder how badly I could hurt them, but not well thought out in the sense of, is this a good thing for me to say? Um, and then the next thing that he says there, one whose rash words are like sword thrusts. Have you ever been stabbed? Just imagine that, okay? <laughs> whose rash words are like sword thrusts. The third sword thrusts. And then the second verse, I'm having a heck of a time with this fly. He's trying to eat me, guys. And then the second part of the verse, it says, but the tongue of the wise, or the mouth of the wise, brings healing. So, obviously, we're not talking about physical healing. You know, a wise person doesn't speak and all of a sudden your scar on your arm is gone. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about a spiritual healing and a mental, uh, a social healing, if you will. Um, so he's talking about more like bringing peace to a situation, uh, resolving the issues, stopping gossiping and complaining, rather than joining into it, rather than uh, saying it yourself, rather than listening to people, you put an end to it. Proverbs says that the person who listens, now, now, now listen to this, the person who listens to gossip is an evil person. It doesn't just say the person who speaks gossip is an evil person. It says the person who listens, who has ears hearing these things, is an evil person. So remember that, okay? Peacemakers make peace wherever they are, okay? So there is one whose rash words like sword thrust, but the tongue of the wise brings healing, okay? If you just think about the last fight you were in, I'm sure you can think of a million applications for this passage. I mean, I know I can, um, unless I'm the only person who says dumb stuff, but I doubt that. Uh, verse, so then we go down to verse 23 here. It says, a prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims folly. And that's weird because there's two words that we're really going to look at on, on this verse. And the first one is prudent. Does anybody know what prudent means? Basically like wise, discerning. In the book of Proverbs, it is synonymous with being righteous or upright. Um, to have sound judgment. To be cautious in what you say or what you do. That's prudence. right? You don't just go and get into a business deal. You don't just say something. You don't just loan somebody money. You don't just buy a car. You don't just buy a house. You're prudent. You think about it before you do it. When you get in an argument, you remember that maybe closing the mouth is better than opening. I mean, prudence, things like that. But then the second word that's very important to this to this proverb is is actually found a little bit later. So a prudent man, I'm sorry, a little bit earlier. No, I said it right the first time. A little bit later. A prudent man conceals knowledge. Now, does anybody know what the word conceal means? To hide. To hide something. So a wise person hides knowledge. What? Yes, yes. A wise person, 
hides knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims folly. I was waiting for him to have a. I was waiting for my son to have a rebuttal cry. You know how they do that? They go. Ah, ah, ah. Do you guys remember when you were that young and you got a time? Oh, I might be a little bit older than that. But you got a timeout, and uh, your parents told you to go lie down in your bed. And, <laughs> and then you were out, and like two hours later, you wake up, and you're like, ah, I feel better. It happens to all this, doesn't it? Anyways, so basically, verse 23, there's really, I really want to drive this, drive this home. Smart people are slow to open their mouths. Smart people choose their words very carefully, and they listen to others when they're talking. And this is something the wise people do. It's, 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 it's a life habit you have to learn, which is kind of goes against everything that's natural in you. Because what you're going to want to do is when somebody tries to meddles into your life affairs or stick their two cents in, you're instantly going to go on the defensive. Why? Because as we grow up, we have this false sense of needing to be independent. We think that independence is the greatest thing in the world, but it's not. In fact, the Bible teaches us something very, very contrary. It teaches us a Christian community that is very much so dependent on each other. Very much so dependent on each other. Um, obviously, there, there's a healthy dependence. And I'm not talking about where you know you don't do anything for yourself and that kind of stuff. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about not feeling like you always have to have the last word in. Not, wrong, not thinking you always have to know what's best in every situation. Not thinking like God only speaks to you and everybody else is an idiot. Right? Because you're more, so much more spiritual than them. So anything that God had to say, he would have just told you. You know what I mean? Just that attitude. You, you kind of get where I'm coming from there? And then it, so then that means the contrast here. The heart of fools proclaims folly. Stupid people open their mouths wide. Stupid people say everything that's on their minds, and stupid people act without advice. If you read through Proverbs, you notice this pattern keep on popping up. The wise person does this, the foolish person does this. The, the, the smart person does this, the stupid person does this. And it goes through the whole book, contrasting these two hypothetical characters of, of you know, righteousness and wickedness. And if you go through, you start seeing things that in, inevitably apply to you you'll find a little bit of the wicked person in you. If you look, obviously, if you think you're the smartest thing in the world, well, then you're not going to find anything in Proverbs. But for those who have ears to hear, they can hear something in Proverbs. So what we do is we go along something like this. I'm not happy in life, so I'm going to try to change everyone and everything else around me. Because I'm not happy. I'm going to move. I'm going to try and change jobs. I'm going to talk bad about people. I'm going to go from church to church. I'm going to do anything that it takes to make me happy. We try to change literally everything and everyone around us on this quest for happiness, to find our life purpose, to you know, to, to live that life that we've always dreamed about. But it doesn't come through things like that. Living a life you've always dreamed about comes from seeking after God. And as you do that, you start realizing that it doesn't matter about where you live. It doesn't matter about the job that you have. It doesn't matter about all those things because you're not going to find happiness in your job. You're not going to find happiness in the house that you buy or you know, in, in the city that you live in. You're going to find happiness in God. It doesn't matter what you have and what you don't have because your happiness and your joy is going to come from God. So the stupid person, in contrast, they're just constantly spouting out these stupid things. They try to change everything. For the quest to be happy. Another thing that they do is they something comes into their mind, so they instantly say it. You know what I mean? You're in a fight, for instance. Somebody says something, the first thing that comes into your mind, you instantly throw it out there. See what I mean? I, I, I thought it, so, so therefore I'm going to say it. But just because you have something to say doesn't mean you should say it. Just because you have something to say doesn't mean you should say it. Another thing that I actually saw online, but is still very true, just because it hurts your feelings doesn't mean that you're right. I see a lot of people fighting about politics 
Just because it hurts your feelings doesn't mean it's, it's right. Doesn't mean you're right. I see a lot of people fighting about, I mean, take a topic. The Syrian refugees, abortion, whatever. Just because it hurts your feelings doesn't mean that you're right. Saying something godly isn't the same as saying something wise. Have you ever had something pop into your head and say, that's a real, real godly thought. That's a good thing. I should say that. So having something godly in your head, even having the right thing in your head, isn't always having the wise thing come out of your mouth. Because a lot of times, you'll have all kinds of insight into how everybody else is doing everything else wrong. That's just human nature. That's not wisdom. But wisdom says it is wiser to listen, even though they're wrong. And I know they're wrong, and I can fix the situation. It's wiser to listen than to open your mouth. See what I mean? And we think we have this idea, but the truth is we don't. We go to work, and we have problems at work. We get in fights with our family members, with our children, with our parents. Because we have that knowledge. It can fix their, their life. And it's godly wisdom. Except it's not wise because we're just saying it. Here's something that, that, that's painful to hear, but that you have to eventually acknowledge in your life. Sometimes your children... Sometimes your children are fools, and they can't hear wisdom. Don't give it to them because you're just going to push them farther away. Jesus said this when he said, don't cast your pearls before swine because they'll turn and bite you. But what we try to do is we have all these answers to fix everybody's life. and We have everything. We just, we just know how to fix things. We're, we're just so smart. We have these godly ideas come into our heads. Hopefully, if we're seeking after God, we'll have godly ideas come into our heads. But just because we have something go into our heads doesn't mean it should come out of our mouths. So you're, you're saying that I could have godly wisdom on the tip of my tongue, exactly what this person needs, and I sh maybe shouldn't say it? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Because the Bible doesn't just say, say wise things. It says, say it with a wise attitude. And then it says, say it at a wise time. But what we do is we do something along the lines of this. Our kids do something stupid. And we try to give them a word. It doesn't work out, duh. And they turn and bite us, and there's this big fight that ensues afterwards. But I had something godly to say. Yeah, and you should have kept it to yourself. Because wisdom doesn't just throw words out. Wisdom listens and speaks with discernment. With discernment. See, I really want to get this home because we are, it is not our job to fix people's lives. That's a hard truth to learn, but it is a truth. It's, it's not your job to fix people's lives. And your many words will never solve all the problems. You might want to write that one down. Your many words will never solve all of the problems. Okay? So saying something godly isn't the same as saying something wise. We have to worry about content, we have to worry about the delivery, and we have to worry about the timing. Always giving unasked advice to children or stubborn people, bosses and co-workers, probably not the greatest idea. Have you ever had a, had a boss that told you to do something that just didn't make sense? So you had to open your mouth every five seconds? How would you close your mouth instead and do what they paid you to do? They're paying you not for your advice, they're paying you to do what, the, what they're telling you to do. See, but what, what we do is we get ourselves into problems because we can't close our mouths. And then we try to mask it with things. I'm a real wise person. Or, this one, I hear this one all the time, it was a righteous anger, so it was okay. Or here's another one. But they were wrong. I have no doubt that those things might be true. However, that doesn't give you justification to just say whatever comes to your mind. See, we're masters of doing something similar to this. They did fill in the blank. Therefore, I can do fill in the blank. We justify doing something bad, sinful, stupid, wicked, evil, foolish, because of what somebody else did. But wisdom, wisdom is not fickle. Wisdom is something that, wisdom is something that, that, that is a lot easier to understand than that. It doesn't change according to the situation. It's truth. See what I mean? And, and, it, and it always will be truth. Wisdom never crosses the line into foolishness. It doesn't do that. 
Wisdom is wisdom. So watch out for giving unasked for advice. If somebody's wise, they'll ask you for advice. If they're not wise, they're going to reject your advice anyways. Unless, obviously, they don't see you as a wise person and they go to somebody else. But it's not important <laughs> that they come to us. It, it matters that, pe that we as people get advice on decisions. You know what I mean? So anyways, is your mouth the first to open in, in most every situation? Ask yourself this. Do you always have an answer for everything? Anytime you see somebody messing up, do you always have something that you have to... Do you always figure out all their problems, how they can solve them? Trying to get your two cents in, just want to be heard? Well, if they just listen to my, what I have to say, ask yourself this. You, you don't have to put on a facade. I mean, it's just between you and God. But be real with yourself, because what's going to happen is you're going to keep doing this thing. Meaning, now, now hear me on this. You're going to intend for the best. You're going to mean well, but it's not going to go like that. People mean well when they sign, when they sign a, what is it called, when they co-sign a loan for their children. People mean well when they bail their children out of jail. It doesn't work like that, though. They don't learn what you meant. They just repeat the behavior. Do, do you get that? It's not... It's not about what you mean. It's about how, how it's received. And most of the time that your children get themselves in the situations like prison, for instance, most of the time they'll repeat the behavior to keep on them out. Not all the time. Sometimes people have a change of heart and they, and they stop. Okay, absolutely. But be very, very careful. Very, very careful about always bathing your children. Be very, very careful about always having to have the last word in. Be very, very careful about things that you know better than your boss. Be very, very careful about bad-mouthing people. Be very, very careful about what comes out of your mouth. Remember that kid's song, Be careful, little mouth, what you say? <laughs> remember that? That's a good thing as an adult to remember. Do you think you can solve everyone else's problems and mistakes if they would just listen to what you have to say? Because I'm right. Or here, here's one I hear. Because I'm the adult. Because I'm the box. Because I'm wise. Because I'm super spiritual. So because of whatever this thing is, it's okay for me to always have my mouth open. Because I'm the box. It's okay if I have my mouth open all the time. I'm the, I'm the mom. I'm the dad. I'm the grandparent. I'm, I'm the child. I know what's best. My parents are old and outdated. They don't have to look. They, they don't know what's going on here. It's, all, it's okay for me to always have my mouth open. It's okay if I bend the rules. The rules are good for other people, but not so much for me because I am above them. It's okay if I get the last word in because I'm more spiritual than them. They just don't understand like I do. I could, I could fix this. Did you see kind of the attitude that I'm saying? And the thing is, you can pretend all you want. We all have these ideas coming kind of to our heads. So don't be all arrogant with me. God never gave us a license to use righteous anger and shoot off something stupid because we got angry. Never in the Bible does it ever say, I have given you an excuse to say something stupid. It never says that. The ability to act, say, or think negative and with a bad attitude simply because the other person was genuinely wrong and I am genuinely right. Because we are prideful, we want our words to fix everything, give all the answers, but they won't because our many words will never solve all problems. If you flip over to James real quick, James chapter 1, the paper's trying to fly away. James chapter 1, verse 19 through 20. It says this. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, so listen when people are talking, slow to speak, that's, that's where you close your, close your mouth, and slow to anger. That's the part where you don't let your feelings get the best of you. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Wait, 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 wait. 
So you're saying that if I get angry at my kids' immoral behavior and I yell at them, that's not going to fix it. That's exactly what I'm saying. So you're saying that if my boss does things that I don't like, that doesn't give me leeway to shoot my mouth and badmouth them to other people? That's exactly what I'm saying. You see, you see kind of the content of Scripture? Scripture doesn't say, now look at everybody else's heart and analyze them to death. Scripture says this, be wise and listen to what I have to say. That's what Scripture says. Because Scripture is for us to learn from God. It's not for us to tell everybody else how they could learn from God. Do you understand that? Write that one down. Because you're going to have times over the next, for the rest of your life, really. Or you're going to try and fix everybody, else, everybody else's life, and it's just not going to work. It's better if you learn it quicker than later. Chapter 3, verses 13 through 18 picks up on, on, on a very similar thread. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, or how he lives, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and yes, even demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Basically, if you want righteous outcomes, you have to do it with peace. If you're thinking bad things, close your mouth. If you're angry or have lost your temper, close your mouth. If you're hurt, close your mouth. Do not respond in the heat of the moment. Never respond in the heat of the moment. Ever respond. Long, drawn-out lectures with children or employers, for instance. Have you ever tried to just sit there and scold your child for forever? They, a newsflash, they stop listening after about 10 seconds, eh, 5 seconds, eh, 3 seconds. They stop listening after about 3 seconds. So anything you have to say, just get right out there and move on, because their, their mind is already gone. Okay? Have you tried scolding your employers? Maybe you're a manager or something like that, and you try to... School, here's a little news flash. Nobody works harder when you just sit there and scold them for forever. Nobody does that. It doesn't work like that. And that. But wisdom doesn't say, hey, let me shoot off my mouth and drag on this lecture that you're going to hopefully learn something from. That's not wisdom. Wisdom says, ah, I'm going to close my mouth for now because I'm a little bit too irritated. Wisdom says, maybe I should show them rather than telling them. Wisdom says, maybe I should hear what they have to say. Wisdom says, you see what I'm saying? Discernment. Prudence. Connecting adults, I'm sorry, correcting adults who don't want to listen, nagging your spouse. Supervising a sibling. I'm the older sibling. You should probably close your mouth. If they're not going to listen to what you have to say. It's just going to come off as you trying to, trying to mother them. It's not good. See what I mean? Especially if you're adults. When you're kids, you can kind of get away with it because, you know, the parents and everything. But once, you, once you're an adult and you try that, it really doesn't work. And what happens is you push your sibling away. And, and the stronger bond that could have been formed between you, you put a rift in between. So, you know, be careful that kind of stuff. Correcting your spouse. Oh, boy. Don't get in the habit of nagging your spouse. Let's just leave it at that. You married people know exactly what I'm talking about. There's no reason that I should have to go on for something that, if you're married, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not married, don't worry about it. <laughs> Commenting on too much social media. In fact, it's best if you just don't comment on things on Facebook and Twitter and stuff. What we do is we see something and we have words of wisdom to give. Okay. A, nobody's opinion has ever been changed on Facebook. It's never happened. Ever. B, usually if somebody's posting something that's private on Facebook, they're probably just doing it for like more of attention rather than getting input. Not always, not always, okay? 
And third off, anything valuable you have to say is usually spoken in private to, between close friends. And fourth off, never try and go to someone that you barely know and tell them all the ways that they could solve their problems. See what I mean? So what do I do when I see somebody post something on Facebook? You pray for them. If there's an opportunity that comes by and they look ready to receive it, say something in a good way that's not beating them down. The Bible says that in many words there is foolishness. When someone comes to you for counsel, talk more than listening. Have you ever had somebody come for you and say, hey, I've got this problem. Okay, here's my already, as, as you were listening, I was already solving all your problems. Do this, 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 and this. Good. That's not, that, that, that's not a good idea. Listen to them, and then if you do say something, say a few. Say a few words. Because once again, wisdom is found in the fewness of words. Proverbs says elsewhere that a wise person is known for their silence. And a foolish person will appear wise even if they, put, if they close their mouth because that's what wise people do. Wise people don't have their mouth open all the time. See what I mean? And so if, oh, if a foolish person wants to close their mouth too, people would think that they're wise too. Oh, this guy has something good to say. You know, and then obviously they open their mouth and it goes down the drain. But for that five seconds that their mouth was shut, right? Open your mouth rarely and let the words you say be as a prized wine. Have you ever seen a wine collector that's really proud of a certain vintage that they have? It's prized. They, they, they save it for years until that time. They finally decide to open it and then they, they, they savor every drop of it, right? Let your words be like that. A savored fine wine. Don't let your word, don't let the things that you say be like beer that you can find anywhere. 